bring me back where I teach uh, macroeconomics and various environmental economics classes. And I'm the director of undergraduate studies. So I get to work with a lot of great students. Um, some of our students are very, very uh, tunnel vision, but most of them are very accomplished in many fields. And so do well in economics and do well at many other things. And so we have two key representatives of that demographic. We've got Rowan Lappy, who is an economics major and a you know, NCAA uh, soccer player and has many other important roles that she'll uh, discuss in the, in the department. And then Amira Ford, who uh, is taking time off from her consulting job this summer and uh, basically brings culture and music and entertainment to campus um, and is also a journalism student uh, along with her economics major. So like, you know, you can be amazing in many ways and also get your economics major here. Uh, a, couple way, a couple words about the economics major before we get going. Uh, so that for most students, you get through Northwestern by taking 45 classes. So it's essentially um, four classes for, per term for four years, and you can sort of drop three along the way. It's going to be fewer if you, know, you have a bunch of AP credits, you take summer classes or something like that. Um, but yeah, so a major is going to be about a fourth of that. And the economics major is essentially 12 economics classes plus stats and um, calculus. And you know, there's some other related classes that um, I think you just pick up by being here and breathing for the most part. Uh, but yeah, so it's, you know, it's essentially stats, calc, and 12 econ classes. And so it's about an econ class per term. Um, and uh, there are programs here which are very heavily sequenced. You know, you have to take this first quarter, this second quarter, this, and then if you don't, then you're falling behind or something like that. Economics is not like that, that the, the major has six sort of core courses and six elective upper level field courses. And we offer all the core classes every single term and almost all of them in the summer as well. And then we offer a ton of upper levels um, every single quarter, including summer. Um, and so there's a lot of flexibility about when you take what. There's, you know, there's a progression. You take intros between before intermediates, <laughs> before upper levels, uh, but there is a lot of flexibility. We're the largest major, which has its pluses and its minuses, like on this plus side it allows us to have a lot of classes every quarter. On the minus, yeah, some classes are pretty big and you won't necessarily get into behavioral economics in the quarter you want it. Um, the, uh, the reasons that we're so large, I think are a few. One is hey, we're great, you know, we're well ranked in the world and things like that. Um, I, I, we're also, I think the flexibility really helps that it allows us to work around, you know, JR, the journalism residency, it allows us to work around, you know, athletic conflicts, allows us to work around, you know, lab classes if you're pre-med and so that, that you know, we can work well with all the other aspects of your life. We're also very supportive of study abroad. So a lot of our students go study abroad for summers or falls or even full years. Um, they go to Italy or England or Spain or Latin America or um, China, they, they, they go all over. Um, and so, you know, so I think that's you know, sort of, oh, and the other thing is Northwestern does not have a dedicated undergrad business program. And so, uh, Econ is the number one major that studies abroad at NU. That is true. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's also because we're just the biggest. So. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that, uh, that without undergrad, uh, undergrad business school, people are really interested in business, often major in economics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, we're sort of business adjacent and that our students often, you know, often do very well on the business track. They, uh, the joke is that we, our students get both kinds of uh, jobs, consulting and finance, um, but you know, they, they go tech, they go government, they go um, startup, they go um, retail. I mean, just you know, our, our students go wherever their passions drive them. Um, some go on for PhDs. Um, that isn't gonna may, maybe pay for a future gyms the way that finance would, but you know, we, we love them all equally. Um, let's see, so, um, we're gonna have registration coming up and that causes some people a certain level of stress, but it shouldn't. Uh, that um, for those of you who are just coming in, that the courses you'd be taking, we don't expect them to close. We don't expect any of the core classes to close. So if, you, if you're hoping to take some economics, great. Um, if you have AP credits and you've got credit for intro micro and intro macro, um, you could go on and take intermediate micro or macro um, 
or you could take econometrics, you've got credit for stats. I'll uh, leave it to Rowan and Amira to give their views on um, whether it's wise to take classes that be full of sophomores and juniors when you're a first quarter student. Um, but yeah, for the most part, we think it's wiser to hold off taking the upper, you know, the, the intermediate courses until you know, winter or spring after you've sort of become acclimated to the life at Northwestern, the pace, the, uh, the, the study expectations, things like that. Um, and yeah, so I guess that's, that's all I've got by way of uh, introduction. Um, uh, Rowan, would you like to uh, say a few words about yourself and what you do here and um, anything you think would be useful? Sure, for sure. So hi guys, my name is Rowan Lappy. I'm originally from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So Amish country out there. Um, like Mark said already, I'm on the soccer team and also majoring in econ with minors in BIP and entrepreneurship. And also alongside of that, something I'm super excited about and so happy to be a part of is women in econ. So I just became a co-president of women in econ. So basically a little bit about that group is, you know, we're just here for like supporting women and representing them within the economic space. Um, historically, obviously, it has been a male dominated field kind of along with a lot of other STEM majors and stuff like that. So to me and to a lot of other people in the club, it's like really important <clears throat> to get that representation out there and just build and support and uplift all the women that are pursuing econ major. Um, so it's a really cool experience and a really cool club to be a part of. So I mean, if you are coming in being an econ major, um, look out for that one for sure. Um, just a quick little, I guess, fun fact is my favorite class so far in econ. I'm about to start taking on my elective, so I'm sure this may change. But it's probably the upper level macro with Mark Woody himself. <laughs> but um, definitely enjoyed that. I guess a bit of advice I could offer is for sure to, like Mark already kind of touched on, um, take advantage of the intro level courses, even if you might have taken an AP in high school or you feel really confident in your abilities, for sure, maybe have like that discussion with your advisor and we all, you know, you might be at different points, but I think I just want to stress the importance of getting used to um, being at Northwestern and, you know, adjusting to college, you're away from your family, you're away from everything uh, you've been used to. So it's a huge adjustment period, especially at an institution like Northwestern. So, you know, I would just kind of hit on the fact of, you know, really taking advantage of those intro courses and getting used to those before jumping into anything upper level or getting crazy with it. Two, two quick things, Rowan. Um, could you say a little more about the business institutions program and the entrepreneurship uh, program? Yeah, so basically there are two. Um, the entrepreneurship program has just become a minor. It used to be a certificate. Now it's an actual minor. Um, business, uh, BIP is business institution studies or something like that. <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know the full name. But um, so with that, essentially, I kind of want to be like more of a business oriented uh, major. And like the cool thing about Northwestern is you can kind of pick and choose from different certificates and minors and programs to kind of shape your degree since you take so many classes. Um, so with that, the business program or certificate uh, minor, kind of all confused. Um, that kind of uh oh, you're freezing up on us. I think um, I was going to ask if you'd have like accounting or corporate finance or marketing or other things through there. I was playing for time there. Oh, sorry. Um, can you hear me now? We hear you great. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, so it's all those courses like that that are definitely more business oriented that you might get at a typical institution that has a business program. Um, so it's kind of just to still get you some of that experience at Northwestern, but also letting you pursue a major in econ so you can kind of be more round, well-rounded and not just pigeonholed into a business oriented major. Um, entrepreneurship is just a bunch of cool, probably like really fun classes where you get to kind of dive into like the different principles of entrepreneurship, um, kind of like demystifying certain attitudes and approaches to it. Um, I think Northwestern has a really great program there, kind of giving you not just the wake up grind, TikTok influencer, chase the money type of entrepreneurship, but, you know, offering different insights like um, entrepreneurship with diversity, entrepreneurship um, and inclusion and other stuff like that. So once again, super cool thing that Northwestern does and just something to make your experience even more fun. Hmm. Um, well, Amira, 
Yeah, so my name is Mira Ford. I am a rising senior double majoring in econ journalism. And um, like Mark said, um, well, Professor Lady, sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> like you said, um, that um, I essentially, I was the booking director for Mayfest this past year. So Mayfest puts on um, our music festival called Dillo Day, which is the nation's largest student run music festival in the country. So you all get free tickets to that hopefully mm. this year. It's outdoors. Um, but yeah, in terms of econ, um, I would say econ is definitely, I think econ is a language um, that really once you learn it, it gives you a different way of looking at the world. And it's definitely a lens that I've grown to appreciate. And I also appreciate the fact that Northwestern does not have an undergraduate business school, and I will tell you why. Hmm. Um, so I work in consulting. Hopefully you guys haven't been battered with the concept of consulting yet. Um, but essentially consulting is a little bit along with finance if you think about um, the type of work that it may require and like analysis and things like that. And I think what you get from a Northwestern econ degree, which is very unique, is that you are learning more of the fundamentals um, and application, and it's less theory in my opinion, and that in a lot of ways, I think makes your work more practical in the real world. So you're able to bring a, a data-driven insight as opposed to like business theory and like what worked in the past. Um, and I think also what you have is like, not that Northwestern doesn't give you a taste of that, um, but Northwestern's econ department does. And I think it's in a very subtle way because the econ department is housed in Kellogg, our um, like business school, which is a global leading business school. Um, and I think just there are things in business school outside of the education that you learn. And I truly feel as an econ student, I've been able to pick up on those things. So like the B school kids like dress really nice and like you get to know some of those unspoken things about um, where you may wanna go in the future. Um, I also think like in terms of a networking perspective, being an undergrad econ major at Northwestern opens you up to so many Kellogg grads. Just tell them that you go into the Global Hub all the time. And I cannot tell you how beneficial that has been for me in terms of like job search process and like being in consulting right now. It's very, um, there's a couple of things. Like it's one thing to be in Medill and it's another thing to go to Northwestern, but it's also another thing to be an econ major at Northwestern. I think it's very special. Um, yeah, and I don't think any of our institutional peers have a econ department like ours, like ours. So it's biased, but I mean, huh. I I think the Kellogg and undergrad adjacent is very important to undergrad experience, especially if you're looking to go to business school. Um, I literally talked with Professor Woody about me wanting to go to business school, and he's like, "Get out of here, go, go fly away." But it's, I'm excited for it more, I think, because I have that tangible connection to it and it doesn't seem something abstract that isn't attainable. So I think there's power in that. But let me put in, so Mary, you're being coy. Um, what firm are you working for and where? Uh, <laughs> so I work for a global management consulting firm. I work for Kearney, which is formerly known as AT Kearney. Um, they're a leading firm across the globe and I'm currently working for them out in San Francisco. So if you play your cards right, you can get a firm to move you out to San Francisco and pay your rent. Um, <laughs> and that's really, I think, honestly, the power of me knowing how to one, understand econ in a way that makes sense to me um, and not trying to force myself into the brain of anybody else and having professors like Professor Witty like work with me to do that. And then also in a way being able to let econ also help tell my story 
right? Like my intellectual curiosity. So yeah, I, I think one thing that I wish I could have done here as I'm a senior looking back is like economic research. I think that's something I wish I would have been able to do, but yeah. I'm happy to take any questions. I don't know if we're moving into that portion, but I'm gonna go on mute now. <laughs> All right, well, so uh, we often talk about how people are hoping to get a job after undergrad, which is most of you should pursue what we sometimes call like the, the three-legged stool that you should academically take courses that set you up to you know, look appealing to a place that might hire you. So like statistics, um, accounting, marketing, economics, um, you know, econometrics, math type classes. So, you know, get the academics right. Um, do a bunch of internships like Carney or a place like that. And then um, have a bunch of campus leadership, like get involved in things you like, you know, it could be athletic, it could be cultural, it could be you know, research. Could be, be sort of like if you, you want to have all three things, you want to have the right academic portfolio, you want to have a bunch of experience, and then you want to have shown how you can envision something and make it happen, like lead and take risks and screw up and you know, make adjustments. And, uh, and so, yeah, it sounds like you know, you're doing that very well. Uh, so, Yaron, have you managed to pull off internships yet? I mean, it's, you're a little more constrained than some of us. Um, yeah, so actually kind of a funny thing, I currently had to quick respond to message yeah. right now here. <laughs> um, I'm currently doing like a virtual internship, I guess slightly different, maybe you wouldn't mm -hmm. expect it, but it's for um, Alera Group, which is like an insurance and private equity firm out of Chicago. And so kind of just like what I do is look at some of the data, but I also just do a lot of work for random people and random PowerPoints and stuff. But like you said, it's just kind of getting the experience and like working mm -hmm. like as a job and like having hours and like kind of getting used to Microsoft Office, to be honest, and all that good stuff. <laughs> Um, that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> super fun all the time. It's insurance, yay. Hmm. Um, but yeah, definitely <laughs> Northwestern. And, yeah. Sorry, but I was just oh, going to say Northwestern yeah. Econ really like, I kind of didn't even end up applying to this job, but just made a phone call and they saw Northwestern Econ. They were like, sign, let me sign you up like 100% <laughs> get you in here. I was like, okay, sounds good. Well. Are you thinking about doing Chicago field studies this coming year? Um, absolutely. So that's basically, if you guys don't know, Chicago field studies, I think happens all three quarters. Mm -hmm. um, and summer. Sure Mark, and summer. So I'm sure Mark can kind of cover what I miss and stuff here. But um, with that, especially being on the soccer team and having a pretty tough schedule and demanding time-wise schedule uh, in the fall, because that's when our season is, um it's also pretty hard in the summer to still have an internship I can barely do this one to be honest since it's a lot more low intensity than some finance firms and like you're doing consulting definitely couldn't really manage that right now so Chicago field studies for me like the perfect time is winter when it is our off season we have less hours so basically what they do is you kind of apply to this program through um this, the nicest lady, Karen Allen, and she kind of helps you through the process. And you basically give her your resume, you meet with her, you kind of talk about what experience you want, what job like you're kind of looking for and where you want to go with it. And then what you do for that specific quarter is you go and actually work in Chicago somewhere um, with a firm, with um, a company, whatever it is, um, and kind of get that experience and have that internship. Uh, but you just do it during the academic year. So advisors and my athletic advisors are all super like helpful and totally willing to like fit that in your schedule and they actually really encourage it so it's a great way to get work experience if you can't really swing it in the summer or um, you just want to throw it in during the school year so definitely looking forward to that this winter yeah and you get academic credit and grades <laughs> academic credit and grades and you probably will get paid for a decent amount of it yeah some, yeah, some of them pay it's, it's fantastic yeah right um, and, oh, um, thank you, Michelle. Uh, and I wanna go, but one thing about you is that, so you're Medill, so you're in the Medill School of Journalism, you're doing a major there, you're doing all of their requirements, and then you're also doing economics. And that's, um, like, so if a student wanna be a journalism major, they have to be in Medill. Um, like if you wanna be in like communication or CESPI or someplace, you have to be in the schools. 
but you can do economics from any, any of the schools. You could be a tuba major in Beenan and also do economics. Um, has, it, has that been comfortable for you? I mean, has, has economics worked well in spite of being not your school's plan? Yeah, so I, okay, backstory a little bit. I did sociology and econ at first, and mm -hmm. I switched into Medill my winter quarter of sophomore year. So came in the game a bit late. Um, however, I share that to say, even though I came into the game late with Medill, um, and I love sociology, but it just wasn't for me long-term, I'm still on track to graduate which I'm very happy to be able to say. So imagine I was double majoring and I also had um, a certificate going for integrated marketing communications. And mm -hmm. I literally just dropped the certificate, completely changed schools from Weinberg doing sociology to Medill to do journalism as my home school. And I think Northwestern is one of the very few places where you can do that and you're still getting a very robust education and still be on track to graduate with your peers. So very flexible also in terms of departments too, with scheduling. All right, well, shall we uh, go to questions? Sound Perfect. good? Perfect, I was just gonna, just gonna hop on. Um, so let's start with some, you know, we've answered quite a few of our questions, but what are some career paths, um, for, this is for Professor Witte, what are some career paths that an econ major can take? So I know you all mentioned consulting and finance, but what are some maybe um, different career paths that a, um, an econ major can take you to? Well, um, I'd say the, career, the uh, finance and consulting are, are sort of means to an end. That a lot of people go there, learn a lot of skills. I mean, like, Amir, have you been ramping up your, your, your skill set for modeling business cases and things like that? I'm not gonna lie, I just had a feedback session with my manager about literally ended at three o'clock when this started. Yeah. And we both just spoke about how like in seven weeks um, I've changed so much and I've learned so much and it's not only professional development but it's personal development, but we can get into that at a different time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so anyway, you, you do these, um, these things and it's kind of like, I think it was a little bit like being in college, like if you've got a, a finance or consulting uh, analyst position that they, they teach you a lot of tools and then they expect to get really good at them. And then after a few years, you often like go back to business school or you know by working with clients and exposure there, you'll be like, hey, I really like this one field. I think that's what I want to do. And so like, these are sort of, I think of it as being like a tasting menu. You can try a bunch of things and say, wow, I really liked working in the transport sector, or I really liked working in the nonprofit sector or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly, it's beautiful. Um, oh, but so other places, yeah, a lot of people, like tech has of course obviously gotten big, and so a lot of the firms are um, hiring economics majors that, you know, like a lot of it is about pricing and auctions and, um, you know, getting over sunk costs so we can just think about going forward and. Um, so that's one place a lot of people go. Um, I mean, we have a lot of entrepreneurs. It's, it's very uh, frightening to me, but also exciting. Um, and uh, I don't know, uh, Rowan or, or, uh, or Amira, where are some of your uh, friends going? In terms of like econ majors? Yeah. Oh, uh, like I'm gonna admit finance and consulting However, <laughs> yeah, that is also true. because most of my friends are outside of econ, but yeah. I will say how I put in the chat, like finance, like consulting wasn't something that I had thought of. Really, it was more so like, yeah, most people talk about consulting, but I have a PR and marketing background, one. Two, I didn't want to do consulting because everybody else in econ wanted to do it. And I was like, why am I going to do it if everybody else wants to do it? Mm -hmm. But my econ 310 one professor, James Hornston, him and I were talking and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do for my career. There's no job that really, you know, fits what I want to do. And if you know that you want to try a bunch of stuff, you don't want to commit to an industry, consulting is great. And my professor told me, he was like, you aren't the smartest kid in my class, but, but you have creative problem solving skills. 
and that's really what is valued in consulting more than can you do a crazy math problem in business case and do you know what gross profit margin is like that doesn't matter I think it's more so how do you think about problems so don't feel like it's as econ heavy as you think there are tons of people that aren't econ majors in consulting and tons of econ majors that don't get into consulting yeah thinking of one of our majors who uh, is in management with the San Francisco 49ers that's that's a fun job to have <laughs> and uh, others work for the Federal Reserve keeping our inflation rate from not getting or keeping from getting too high and um, as they say, they wake up every morning thinking about the dual mandate, keeping unemployment at potential and keeping inflation at 2%. Uh, Rowan, do you have any uh, friends that are doing fun things with their economics major? Um, yeah, so I guess like most of my primary built-in friends are my teammates, and there's only like a couple econ majors on my team, so they're kind of all over the place, but like it's already been touched on, definitely finance and consulting is a big one. Um, some people that I know I've gotten into like market research and like kind of things more like from that side of things. Um, also like social services. I know there's a couple people with an econ kind of background that like wanna go into that and like potentially work for like a nonprofit, but maybe more on like, I guess kind of like running things from like the numbers, but businessy slash like holistic approach and kind of taking over certain um, areas and positions in that way. Uh, yeah, that's all I can really think of off the top of my head. Yeah, I'm actually now thinking of, we have a remarkable number of our majors who work at, for the Green Bay Packers as, as football players, and some work for the Vikings, I think the Browns and the Chargers. <laughs> so yeah, so if you want to career in the NFL, it's a way to go. Um, all right, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, with CFS, um, can everybody see these questions or is this uh, just for us panelists? No, nope, that's just for the panelists. I think Michelle right. is going to um, respond to some. Oh, that's awesome. But I'll also ask a couple of live, live as well. So things like CFS, is it your responsibility to find your internship independently? No, they got a hell of a Rolodex. Although if you do have an internship you want to do, like if you come in with them, like this place, I want to work there. They'll try to make it happen. Oh, Michelle's already answering it. And um, and yeah, so that, but yeah, they'll, they'll find you. Uh, they'll find you an internship. Um, let's see, do you recommend taking 201 if you've already got the AP credit? Um, Amira says no. What do you think, Rowan? Um, I'd say it depends on maybe how long ago you took it. I know some people take it like sophomore year of high school, potentially, or even junior year, and then you go a while without it, and then you jump back in, like I said at the beginning. College stuff happens, you figure it out. Um, I'd say each person is like individually different, so I'd say just see how confident you feel in the material and then see how confident you feel about leaving home and starting a new place. That, that, that's a good approach. I, in general, I think it's really bad to retake anything you have an AP credit for because you lose the credit that um, AP credits allow you to take uh, easier quarters. I mean, like you essentially, if you come in with no AP credits, it's four classes per term with three quarters of only three credits, but for every AP credit, that's one more quarter that you could go with three classes instead of four, which can make your life easier. Um, but yeah, that if you get in like intermediate macro or, you know, it's, you're not feeling comfortable. Yeah, sure. What the heck, take it. Um, let's see. Can you get involved in econ research? Uh, you can. We've got this thing called econ lab, like if you Google Northwestern econ lab. Oh God, Michelle's just so all, all on this. Um, so possible. Hey Mark, do you want to go use some of the questions that we have submitted ahead of oh, time? Yeah, that's then, a we good can, idea. then we can um, answer some of the questions submitted in the Q&A, maybe in the last like 10 or 15 minutes or so. Um, and Rowan and Amira, if you see any questions in the Q&A that pop in that you want to like type an answer to, feel mm -hmm. free um, as well. Um, I just want to make sure that we're getting to all the questions that were submitted ahead of time. So we had a lot of really good ones. Um, so Seems I wanted to ask, um, could you give a general overview of what the first year of study looks like? So Professor Witte from um, like a classes standpoint, Amira and Rowan, if you also wanted to um, talk about what your first year of study looks like. Yeah, so I mean, the classic thing to do is you go in and take intro macro and then intro micro and then um, conceivably intermediate macro or micro 
maybe take stats and calc along the way. Um, most people take calc in the first year. People with AP credits though, um, yeah, they might or might not take calc, they might or might not take stats, they might or might not take um, the intros. I'd say if you get through the first year and you've, you're done with intro, micro and macro, you're doing fine, whether it's just by AP or by taking them. And um, we don't really care which one you take first. I think macro is easier, maybe. I, mean, I think micro is a little more intense, perhaps. I think macro might help you. Like macro starts with an overview of, like a macro starts with a really quick overview of micro, whereas micro just is micro. Um, and uh, I, I, uh, I also think first year, it's a great time to try other major. Like you, you, you can imagine various things you might want to major and minor in, and you should just take those. Like, you know, some people get taking distribution requirements that they would never ever major or minor in, like, I don't know, astronomy. Like, you know, it's a perfectly great thing to take, but if you're sure you're not gonna be an astronomer, maybe you want to put that off to junior and senior year after you've worked out what you're gonna major and minor in. And, you know, if you think you might want to major in history, you know, first year, take some history. Um, and yeah, on the math thing, I think it's good to take math. Even if you've got you know, AP credits to cover all your requirements, I think it's good to have a little math on your record at Northwestern. And I, I generally recommend taking as much math as you can stand. Like, you know, once, once you're hating it, okay, stop. But, but I do think you know, it's good to, to build those mathematical muscles. But I would be glad to hear from practitioners in the field. Now, Rowan, Amira. Yeah, I can hop in and go first. Um, so my first year, uh, like I said, I kind of came from Lancaster, um, so Amish country. So we only had like six AP classes in my high school and we didn't really have anything offered for those types of credits yet. Um, so I came in and took, I took intro to micro first and then I took intro to macro just because um, like my soccer schedule and like how things lined up with that. Um, that's what I had to do, but I definitely agree that I think intro to macro helps like a little bit more because it gives you like a more holistic approach and you kind of like get it under your wings and like you can kind of like take it all in and then dive into like, like a little bit more of the intense micro. Um, so I did that my first year and then ended up actually not taking any econ in my spring and I just finished off my calc and my stats. And then, um, and I actually took a summer class. Um, my, I think that's when I took, I took it with you, Mark, my summer uh, class in um, upper level macro. So mm -hmm. I still ended up, I guess, kind of like taking three econs my first year, but um, I'm like well ahead of like a decent amount of my friends. And like, it's definitely not something to stress about if you only take two econs your first year. Mm -hmm. and, and a fair number of people don't really get into econ by until like the end of sophomore year. And so you can, you can really, you know, if you go nuts on it, you can definitely finish it in two years. I mean, we don't recommend that, but it's, it's certainly doable. Uh, how about you, Amir? What, how'd you do your first year? Honestly, my first year, I mean, I came in with AP macro, didn't take 201. Um, I just went to 202. And I took 202 my spring quarter. So I didn't take any econ classes till spring freshman year. Um, I do have to hop off because my mm. manager is requesting my work. Um, but I do want to answer like Carmen's question really quickly. Um, so like the question is, if I'm interested in like marketing international business, like would you recommend like pursuing an econ major? Um, and I wanted to answer this because I think it's applicable to like everyone. Um, I think Northwestern, so part of the reason why I came to Northwestern is because and is in our DNA, right? And it's pretty much, you can curate any type of education that you really want. Um, I thought that I wanted to do marketing. I thought I wanted to do PR. Um, and that was a track that I was on. And I did econ and sociology because I wanted to study how people with different socioeconomic statuses are like, how that relates to them as consumers and the products that they buy and blah, blah. But as you can see in here, right, like what I'm about to go do after I hop off this call has nothing to do with that. Um, so I would say come into Northwestern, especially if you're a freshman, really try to curate and create your own education because it is something that I think 
when you come out on the other side, you're going to feel more proud about. Um, it also helps you feel more grounded, I think, in your academic journey. And Northwestern is a perfect place to pivot. So when I switched majors, I want to say the process probably took less than a week. And it's just making a couple phone calls, a couple emails. And it's very welcoming to do that. It's not seen as failure or, oh, no, I'm going to be behind. Um, well, there are some times I was like, oh, no, I might be behind, but I am not, right? And I think that's by the grace of the way that Northwestern is constructed. So figure out what interests you. Um, there are people that I know that are on track to be doctors and they're French majors and pre-med. And it's because they want to focus on French speaking, um, low income, like developing countries that were colonized by the French. Like do what you want, curate it how you want and don't waste your parents' money. That's mm -hmm. all I have to say. Um, it was so great to meet everyone. And like, I'll drop my email in the chat in case anybody wants to like follow up with me or like shoot me some questions. But thank you everybody for just letting me share my story and hope you guys have a great one. Well, thanks for coming out. Um, all right. All right. We, we wanna go on for our next question then. Thanks again for joining us, Amira. And thanks for putting your email in the chat. Um, so the next question, um, what are some of the different economics tracks that are available to students? Like, is there a, you know, if you wanted to focus on healthcare economics or anything like that, are there specific tracks that students can do? That's for Professor Witte. Oh, I mean, the, the, we certainly have courses in, let's say, economics of medical care, for an example, and then, like, you know, that's sort of very specific to a field, and then we've got broader courses, which are sort of more tools based. So like industrial economics, thinking about you know, applied game theory in the business world about you know, how firms compete with each other, you know, how they um, oh, handle competition or prevent competition, things like that. Um, and you know, then we've got courses in say like public finance, which is you know, how government programs interact with the economy and how taxation is important, but messes things up. And, and so like, you know, there are, there are you know, in a given area, there are courses that are very focused on it. Uh, and then there are things that are sort of important in it that build up to it. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I, I think uh, you know, whatever your interests are, you can find a number of upper level classes that will you know, be very close to what you're interested in, or if not exactly close to it, will be very helpful for sort of making broader understanding of, of what's going on in that area. And I would include in that some of the econometrics courses where you know, the, the world's just getting a wash in awesome data and that you know the truth is out there if you know how to look for it and so like trying to you know separate the get the signal out of the noise and that that's very important for you know, almost anything you want to do all right this question is for rowan um can you talk about the workload that comes with it being an econ major yeah so um i definitely think the workload is for sure manageable but it's definitely a lot of times um i think there is a blessing that comes with that, that Northwestern gives you a super, super um, in-depth and like just holistic education that you probably can't find a lot of other places. I would say that the workload is definitely relative to you based off um, kind of what else you're involved in and how thin you're stretched in certain areas. I would definitely say though that the workload is definitely manageable. However, like if you start to get into taking like two econs at once, or if you maybe are taking an econ with like a topper math course, or like, yeah, you have like econometrics and you paired that with like some upper level calc, um, things are definitely gonna get a little tougher just because you will be spread a little more thin in certain areas. But definitely the econ major itself is for sure manageable. It's not scary. It doesn't have to be scary. And <laughs> it's definitely doable for sure. Awesome. Um, this is for Professor Witte. Um, how much, so if someone was um, like sub struggles in math, would you recommend an econ major and why? Uh, that is concerning um, that, I mean, there's a, a range of math backgrounds in economics, certainly that uh, there are some of our students are double majors in the math methods and social sciences program or double majors in math. Um, 
And so, yeah, so there are econ majors who just take a ton of math, uh, but the requirements are stats and derivative calculus. And that, you know, in, in econ classes, you're always talking about marginal this, marginal that, marginal revenue, marginal cost, marginal utility. And marginal is just the economist way of saying derivative. So you can certainly get through just on, um, just on derivatives. So it's doable, but it is, it is you know, concerning. There are some, like the upper level econometrics, uh, I'd want to review my math a lot <laughs> before I take that, or uh, the risk and uncertainty class. It's only got a lot of proofs in it. Um, the advanced macro is a lot. Yeah. So there are some upper level classes where, you know, you might not want to take it if you, if you're concerned about, you know, your math ability, but there are a ton of other upper level classes where you're just fine that, um, you know, there's a lot of graphical analysis, a lot of logic, um, you know, some, some degree of writing or, you know, facility with history. And so if you, if you choose your courses, you'll be fine. Um, but, you know, it is the sort of thing where, uh, you know, we, we typically, you know, we you typically think like the, the stars, the ones going on for PhDs tend to be heavy math, but, you know, a lot of people going on to very, very lucrative careers in all sorts of fields, you know, they, they got through the first quarter of math, got through econ and did just fine. So yeah, so Rowan, how do you feel? I mean, how much math have you had? And you know, do you feel it's you know, wicked or fine or, or what? So to be honest, I'm definitely probably not the most like mathy or math oriented person. Um, so like math has like never been my favorite subject. Honestly, it was like English and all that type of thing in high school. So if that tells you anything, um, I mean, I feel like that's a pretty good example, but like my math, I took at Northwestern, like I said before, it's definitely as easy or like as hard as you kind of want to make it. So obviously you have the econs you have to take. And I for sure would say like, you need to be able to take derivatives and you need to be able to understand calculus. Um, and that stuff hasn't always like come naturally to me, but that's just definitely like, I know, I like know that going into my econs. So I definitely struggle more in certain econ classes, but um, I like kind of know that going in, like, this is where I'm going to struggle. I have to really focus on this part of it, maybe less on the conceptual stuff. Cause I'll, I like get that more naturally. Um, so I think it's just kind of about like knowing yourself, but like, if you're like looking to go to Northwestern or you're coming to Northwestern, you're definitely at a point where you, you're used to at least working hard or you're a genius. So either boat you're in, um, you should be pretty well off. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely not even close to being one of the brightest people here, but I definitely just kind of like work hard at it and, you know, ask for a lot of help, go to office hours, um, study with my friends. So it's definitely, if you're not a math oriented person, um, you just have to be willing to put work in or want to learn it. Um, that's what I would say about that. What do you think has been the most mathematical econ class you've taken or the hardest one you've taken? Um, I personally really, it was my favorite, uh, I really didn't necessarily enjoy, um, 3101. So yeah. upper level micro wasn't my favorite class. I definitely like the macro approach more and that type of stuff interests me more. Um, mm -hmm. So if it doesn't interest me as much, I definitely struggle more. Um, also, the online environment was slightly tough for me to, yeah. you know, my chickens and ducks in a row, not chickens in a row, ducks in a row. But <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so this is going to be our last question from my pre-selected questions. So if you have any questions that haven't been covered yet, please feel free to throw them in the Q&A and we'll try to get to a few before we close today. So this is my last question of my pre-prepared questions will be for Rowan. Um, so you talked a little bit earlier about women in economics. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about just the gender breakdown that you have in classes, what that sort of looks like, what your experience is as a woman in economics, as well as if you have maybe a message for the women that are on this call today that maybe are wondering if economics is for them. All right, so I would definitely say um, there's that stereotype out there of being like, I guess like a like a business bro or like a, like a business dude. And so at Northwestern, like I like was mentioned before, there's no business school, but to, for some people, it's definitely like you're an econ bro. Um, but the encouraging thing for sure is that there's like like from freshman year, even to now in my junior year, there's like a lot of women and like a lot of 
females that are in econs and like never have I ever taken a class and like sat there and been like oh my god I'm surrounded by so much testosterone like there's there's a lot of women that are in it um and the cool thing is like everyone supports each other it's a very like inclusive environment like never have I had a professor um at all look at me differently because I'm a woman if anything they're the ones that are like trying to build women up um so I think that at Northwestern um is an awesome environment especially as a female um you're given so many opportunities to succeed and perform and just like continue to make economics um a more level playing field in the sense of females and male representation within it and yeah never had any issues with it always had a good experience so it's great yeah. i think our i think we we had a good year hiring this year we hired five or six people and i think four of them are women um and and they're applied micro which is a group that i really like because the stuff they do i find very interesting and i can actually understand it i'm like theorists where i'm just like I guess it's good. <laughs> um, uh, all right. Well, so Kaylee, we're going to, um, what's the next step for us? Yeah, let's, we can pull a couple of questions that are coming in from the Q&A. So oh, Vin yeah. asks, is it possible or common to join econ research, to do econ research as a freshman? Or, and if so, how can they prepare themselves um, for those research opportunities? Uh, I think it's tough in that, uh, you know, we've, there's, we're a huge major, and so it's like it's a lot of students per per, per professor. We have a big PhD program. So there's there's not a lot of research spots the way there are in say psychology or chemistry or some other areas, which we kind of regret. Um, there is this econ lab where we try to match you know, faculty needs with you know, student interests and talents. Um, it does help to have taken econometrics, econ two eighty one, which comes after stats. Um, it also helps to like, a lot of the work is data related, and so it helps to you know, no Python or or some other uh, programming language, um, and some other people. You know, a follow up question that was asking about stats or data science. Yeah, data science is, I guess, a a minor heading its way to being a major. And yeah, they have some cool tools in there. And so, like having that kind of background can often help um, getting a research assistant job in economics. Or um, there are a lot of economists in Kellogg. Or you know economics adjacent, like they're, they're sort of quantitative, you know, doing econ type things. And also in the Institute for Policy Research, IPR, there's a bunch of empirical social science people there. And so a lot of econ people who want to do research, um, get on some of the projects there if, if they can't find something in economics. So we had another, a question come in the chat. Um, about internships. So how difficult is it to get internships? What quarter do students mostly, or what year do students mostly do internships? Um, I guess I can talk about this like a little bit. Um, like I said before, compared to, um, like it definitely depends on where you're applying, what internship you want. Like, like we said before, like a lot of things are relative. But I mean, having a Northwestern degree, being at Northwestern, you're definitely given a lot of advantages. And a lot of preferential treatment in some aspects, just because a lot of, I mean, employees love Northwestern and want kids that go here to work for them. Um, I would say it definitely depends on who you are, but a lot of my friends that aren't necessarily athletes, they try to get an internship the summer going into junior year. Uh, it, maybe it's like not your favorite internship and not the place you really wanna work, but it's just to get some experience on your resume and kind of build that background. Um, so it can start as early as then. Uh, I would say the big year for a lot of um, mostly like finance and consulting, at least um, a big year is definitely junior year or like junior summer going into your senior year. Um, that's definitely a big time to get those like, I guess, like the, the, the really big internships you really want. Um, but I would definitely encourage you to like take a look at any internship you can kind of get on your resume um, your summer going into junior year. Like I said, it doesn't have to be crazy. I'm doing one while also doing preseason and also being president of Women in Econ. So it, you know, just getting something on there is great. Yeah, I, I agree that the summer before seniors is very important. And Northwestern, the Career Center, um, CFS, and other places like that work hard to try to, you know, set that up. 
Um, summer before junior year is nice. Uh, summer after first year before sophomore year, yeah. <laughs> don't don't stress it. No, if you get that's great. If not, um, and then like the Chicago field studies, a lot of people do that late sophomore or earlier middle junior year. That's sort of the the big time for that. And so there's a lot of opportunities and support for getting internships. It's very important, and uh, we try to make that try to make sure that's going to work for you. All right, um, maybe Rowan can touch a little bit on this one. Um, can you talk a little bit about the economics community? Like, do you consider it to be, you know, collaborative or, you know, maybe if you have like a story or something to share about just your experience working within, you know, the econ department and also with your econ peers? Yeah, so um, through actually like through women in econ, we definitely, um, people that are enrolled in the club, we try to like look to see who's taking what classes and pair people up and make separate group chats for people within maybe the same classes so that it can be collaborative and people can ask for help and stuff. Um, but also just in general, um, every single like econ class I've taken, there's been like a group chat where people like can ask questions or like if they have a specific question on a, like a homework that obviously they're allowed to talk about, um, they just chuck it in there and like, Maybe you might ask like, hey, does anyone want to work together on X, Y, Z or like this problem set if they're allowed to work on it together? And then people, you know, like to meet up. For example, I like would all the time walk into Bob, which is a dorm um, my freshman year. And I would just kind of like go sit down in the study rooms. And all of a sudden I would look up and see a bunch of people in my intro to my field class. And I'd be like, oh, hey, like, do you want to study together? Like, do you want to take a practice test together? And then I like, go through it and there's just so many people all the time that want to get studying under their belt, but don't love to do it alone. So pretty much anyone you hit up or like talk to is more than willing to like study with you or, you know, everyone kind of has each other's backs and like wants to like, you know, at least just kind of learn econ and succeed on tests and stuff. So it's definitely very collaborative. Yeah. I don't think it's a terribly cutthroat culture. I don't think it's a cutthroat culture at all. In fact, um, it does seem pretty collaborative. People like, prepping each other for interviews and passing on tips and things like that. Um, I do think it's, we struggle a little bit in that the Kellogg Global Hub is a remarkable building, but it's it's not essentially located as our old place was. And it, um, like, like some departments have more, um, have more sort of interaction in the department from, from students. And, you know, I, I don't think we've, we've achieved that yet. The Res College system has done some nice work with uh, turning the res college dorms into like study sessions before exams. And so that, I, I like how that has turned out for a lot of classes. They sort of, you know, have cookies and soft drinks and say, hey, let's get together. And, you know, this exam's coming up. We'll have like some professors or TAs there to, to answer questions. And, you know, basically students get together and, and you know, work out the, the tricky things they haven't figured out yet before the exam actually takes place. I'll ask one more question to Rowan. Um, what is one thing that you wish you knew going into econ? Like something that you know now that you wish you would have known then? Um, okay, so I feel like maybe for like most of my classes, and this could just be like personally for me and how I work, um, I do think that to succeed in econ, um, there's definitely value in doing like a lot of problems. And like before in high school, like I might have, you know, read the textbook, like looked at a couple problems and then like been totally fine. I think that here, especially because a lot of times um, professors like to, you know, potentially throw you something new in the exam and just test how you like kind of work through it and like see what you can do. Um, I definitely think there's value, especially within the major and just for your learning in general to get used to problem solving and doing problems on the fly and even like timing yourself while you do problems. Um, just to see like how fast you can get through it with the time pressure. Uh, I definitely think there's a lot of benefit to like actually really working through a lot of problems instead of just maybe glancing at the textbook and, you know, reading things. Um, definitely doing an econ I feel like is better and definitely asking a lot of questions for sure. All right, in the interest of time, it looks like it's time for us to wrap up. Um, do either of you have any last minute thoughts that you, you know, something that you haven't gotten to share yet or anything like that before we wrap up? I would like to say I appreciate you, Kayla, for organizing this and it's gone very smoothly. And I appreciate all that Rowan's done here. Um, I mean, 
I remember you uh, rolling in with uh, your knee on a those little, uh, like the next general improvement on crutches as it were. And uh, that you, know, you both have sort of seen how the state of the world is and said, you know, it could be a little bit better this way. It could be a little bit better this way. And so you sort of your intellect and force of personality you have on the margin uh, made it better. And so I, I hope all the people out there for seeing you will uh, similarly come up with good ideas and express them and uh, make this a better place for, for everybody. Yeah, and thank you, Kayla and Mark for just inviting me to come talk to everyone. And I mean, I hope everyone on this call, you know, I hope to see you soon someday in Northwestern, you know, getting that econ in. <laughs> thank you both for coming and Zamira as well. Um, if you have any further questions, you can feel free to reach us at econba at northwestern.edu. I'll drop that in the chat as well. And everybody else put their, um, their emails as well. There you go. Um, so please be on the lookout for our upcoming undergraduate programming. So we have, um, we're going to be at the Academic Directions Fair on, well, as part of it on September 7th and 8th. So if you have any other questions, feel, feel free to join us for one of those sessions. Um, and Professor Witte will also be at the Roads to Business uh, session as well. So if you want more Professor Witte in your life, feel free to join yeah. in on that call. <laughs> uh, all right, if you don't, um, that, it looks like we're our time. So thank you everyone for joining us and have a great rest of your night. All right, bye everyone. <laughs>